All right, here back now on Sports Overtime, joined by a former Lion and a man who was at today's game at Ford Field, Ty Halleck. But before we get to today's festivities down in Detroit, I want to show you a picture that was emailed to me this afternoon. Yes, look at this. We've got Ty Halleck. We've got Larry Fergurski. The Honolulu boys down there at Ford Field. So tell us about this. I know uh, Fergurski had the day off. Big Lions fan. Uh, has always been drinking the Kool-Aid, even for the better part of the last decade when they weren't good. Now that they're good, he's obviously loving this, as are all Lion fans. Tell us about today's trip. Uh, it was awesome. For myself personally, it was a trip with 32 guys on a bus going down to Ford Field, and then only to meet Mr. Fergurski, Larry's father. So it was an awesome day, awesome energy, and certainly with the largest victory in franchise history got the ticket got the hat we got it all set it up for you right here so a little bit of history i brought back for you from ford field and it was uh it was an awesome game i mean from the very beginning going in i mean people were pumped up they were they were jazzed up and certainly the detroit lions fans made a lot of noise today and rightfully so you know any, any home opener in any season fans are going to be jazzed up and ready to go but could, could you feel it this year from from your time going down there in the last few years could you feel it even going in there today especially coming off the win last week in tampa the way these guys finished off the last season going undefeated in the preseason could you feel that vibe i i definitely did and i think we as fans were excited to see the team come right out not make make any bones about it they were there to play football matthew stafford certainly did his job driving them right down the field to get a touchdown the one thing is, is in professional football you see real quick kansas city comes back and they ran the football on detroit early anyways and then when charles got hurt on the sideline their star running back it all was downhill from kansas city six turnovers all that uh, detroit lion pride certainly fumigated from every direction with all the fans, the the, the, the players, Nadama can sue, everybody sue, sue, they're all screaming and going crazy. So certainly Ford Field was electric today and it was pretty cool. It was hard to believe though walking out of there looking back at the scoreboard and seeing 48 to 3. And Larry Fergurski had one of the best quotes of the day. Everybody started exiting actually at 41 to 3. And he said, you know, normally people are exiting like this in the fourth quarter because in the last 10 years, we've been losing. This is incredible. We're kicking somebody's <laughs> butt so bad. They're all heading for. They're all heading to get out early just because of the, how lopsided it was. So, absolutely incredible. And certainly for Lions fans, they're excited. So, aside from the vibe and being down there and the opening day victory, what what impressed you about this team the most today on the field? Well, I think there's a lot of guys that are stepping up. I mean, certainly guys like Tulloch and Durant show you how much better we are at linebacker. These guys are making plays, they're making hits, they're getting after it, they're helping create some of the turnovers. Six turnovers today that they created from uh, the Kansas City Chiefs. I also like uh, our, our defensive backfield and the way they're playing, certainly playing off that defensive front, which gets after it uh, you know, on the front side of things. But Barry today made an awesome play intercepting a pass when in reality he sat back in coverage instead of doing just his job he decided also to play football and that's something that I think comes from confidence I think it comes from the coaching staff I think it comes from a team that believes they can win football games now and certainly that's got to be exciting to see guys out there that are not only doing their job defensively but they're making plays and that's big all right they go to Minnesota next week Vikings with a tough loss to Tampa today they're 0 and 2 so all of a sudden here come the Lions at 2 and 0 heading to Minnesota and they've got struggles of their own yeah and I, and I, I, I I'm excited for these guys to get again on the road to show what type of team they are certainly Minnesota is going to be chomping at the bit they gave one away today to Tampa they got up on them early and then lost that football game and starting off 0 and 2 the way they have it's going to be a tough tough task anytime you go to Minneapolis and get inside uh, of, of their stadium. It is a rocking uh, place, and they're going to be excited to see the Detroit Lions knowing that they're riding a high. This is a great test early in the season, for I, I think, for Jim Swartz and his staff when you look at what they have to do going on the road and making sure that they don't get too high, that they actually settle in and show what winners do, which is show up every week, win the games they're supposed to win. And I, and I would assume this is a game that they should win. All right, Ty Halleck talking Lions football. It's nice to talk to you, these guys. We've had you in here I mean, for 10 look at years. This stuff. Are you kidding? When did I bring in a hat last time or a ticket? Get to sit next to Larry Fergurski, one of the greatest days of my life. Uh, you love it. 10 years we've been talking Lions football. We're finally actually getting to talk about something exciting. It's great. It's awesome. Appreciate it. Back here on Sports Overtime, once again joined by former Lion and Spartan Ty Halleck as we turn our attention to talk a little college football. So 
Notre Dame 31, Michigan State 13. Your initial thoughts coming out of the weekend on this one? Well, I think that Michigan State, quite frankly, is a good football team, but they ran into a team, one, that certainly had their backs against the wall, and two, knew that they had, in going into that game, we're going to have to run the football, establish that run, maintain some clock, and not give Notre Dame the opportunity to be on the field as much. Uh, the way that it started, it looked like Michigan State would be, in my opinion, kind of just fine, but all of a sudden, two turnovers by Notre Dame. You think it's you think it's kind of same old, same old for Notre Dame, but Michigan State just never got the run established. Had some big plays. They did some uh, uh, overload overloading sets, but they never got themselves going. And Kirk Cousins made uh, uh, mistakes that he typically doesn't make, and so Michigan State comes out with a loss. Uh, when in reality, I think they could go toe to toe with these guys. But I think too. The one thing that stood out at me is the shuffling of the interior line for mm -hmm. Michigan State is something that's going to be interesting. To, they're going to have to figure that out as they you know, work this week against Central Michigan and go into the Big Ten season as well. You know, Obviously, a lot of Spartan fans excited with Kirk Cousins back and a lot of the skilled players coming back, especially at receiver, but a young offensive line. Three new starters on the offensive line, and State held to just 29 yards rushing. A lot of the questions after the game for, for Coach D'Antonio was about that offensive line, about the rushing attack. You know, if we can't get these guys blocking up front, if you can only get 29 yards rushing against a good team like this, you know, we've got some growing pains there on the line. Well, I think not only do you have growing pains, but it forces you to get out of your comfort zone offensively if you're not able to run the ball then you might as well take advantage of the receivers you have certainly they've got some pretty good receivers and allow the quarterback in my opinion who's the best player on their football team to to slice and dice it and get start making quick passes and get the ball down the field so I was a little bit surprised that they didn't do as much of that as I thought they would against Notre Dame who quite frankly in the last couple of weeks has shown they maybe around the ball but they don't make plays on the football uh, they just never got the opportunity to take advantage of it because I think systematically they were looking to come in run the football and then set up that play action pass they had some big plays yesterday and certainly had the availabil availability to be in that football game but again special teams mm -hmm. and, a, and a turnover here and there just just hurt them in the end state hosts central this coming weekend at Spartan Stadium now uh, Notre Dame's win over MSU makes Michigan's win in a way over Notre Dame last week look that much better Wolverines now back in the rankings ranked 23rd in this week's AP poll, um, or 22nd, I should say, um, after knocking off Eastern. Yeah, and I think Michigan comes back, has a good, solid victory against an opponent that they should beat after a high of highs when they came back and won against Notre Dame. For Michigan, I think this out of the gates here, and, and quite frankly, for a good run, uh, they, they set up well to be... At, uh, you know, an undefeated football team by the time they come to East Lansing October 15th, as you look at their schedule. They just have to maintain getting better under a new system, new coach, and I think coaches and the players there, specifically Denard Robinson, continue to feel each other out on things that they can do that fall within the system that they want to run versus what availability they have. One thing that Denard Robinson obviously did this weekend was run, run mm -hmm. with the football. It's something he's very good at, and I think ultimately uh, it, it will pay good dividends for them so long as they continue to mix it up. And I think that's the biggest thing with Michigan right now is that continued growth with what they ultimately want to do offensively versus what Denard Robinson allows you to do. Yeah, 198 yards rushing. It's funny, Michigan's trying to use the rushing attack first. Now it seems like, hey, we, we've got Robinson. We, we need to utilize him, even though we're trying to get away from that spread offense. Well, and I think sometimes it's, it gets that simplistic. I mean, when you have your best football player is on the football field and he's your quarterback, but he happens to run as well as he does. I know that most traditionally speaking, you don't want that situation, but certainly with him, you have to do it. You got to do it. Michigan uh, taking on Hoke's old team, Brady Hoke's old team next week, San Diego State down at the Big House. Ty, thanks. You got it.